I think we've all heard that in silence comes the consecration. We have a moment of silence there. Given what we're all facing now with the plague, our plague, the world's plague, it would be good for me to redefine the purpose of the conjure, to bring it more into the present day. As I sit here, as I woke this morning, as I went out this morning, there was fear, hope, commitment, and a very strong desire to be of benefit to all those around me. This conjure now addresses the fear that I felt in that I would imagine at some point and in some way you have felt during the past three months. Dr. John, in terms of folklore, was a great drummer, a great voodoo drummer. I would like to emphasize him now as a healer rather than a drummer. Originally, in working with him, and I've been working with him since, oh, Lord, 1970, 1970, yeah, 1970, yeah, yeah. It has always been as a drummer, not as a healer. I do believe that now it is time to work with him, to strengthen him, to strengthen him. That is the purpose of the ritual, to strengthen him, to resurrect, bring up in a stronger manner and strengthen him as a healer. <sighs> Why strengthen Dr. John? Why? The original Dr. John was a New Orleans voodoo doctor reputed to have cured people infected with the scarlet fever. He has helped me in many ways in that respect. He has shown me things in that respect. He has been present in that respect. The yellow fever was a plague that held New Orleans in its grip for most of the 1800s. He was reputed to be and is honored in New Orleans as a drummer, healer, and herbal doctor. It is as a healer that this conjure addresses him. The purpose of this conjure is to strengthen Dr. John as a law of healing, that he may in turn strengthen the spirit of individuals in these times of plague. We're all home a lot. Uh, we probably read a lot. One of the things that I read over and over is A Plague by Camus. And I remember one of the characters saying there are times when a person's courage fails. I think we've all experienced that. This conjure is to call Dr. John that he may help us in those times and in all times. What we want to do is resurrect and more fully strengthen Dr. John as a healer on a larger scale that he may be a benefit to our community. The occult community, the voodoo community, the Islamic community, whatever community we identify with, and to homo sapien in general. Healing. Healing. I once asked priest Ashwan Shamani of the New Orleans Voodoo Spiritual Temple to explain to me what healing was. I never could quite figure out, we live and we die, what is healing? What he said was that healing was needed by a person to the extent that that person was manifest as separate from their highest sense of spirit. That's very, it was very, very important to me. All of a sudden I saw how important that was, how important healing is. 
to the extent that an individual was manifest as separate from their highest sense of spirit, they could use healing. A question, and a question that relates to this conjure, if this separate separation were to decrease, how would we show ourselves in this time of plague? How beneficial, how caring for those around us would we be? So with the change in emphasis, maybe people want to leave, there's honor in that. And for those who care to stay, for those who care to stay, we will begin. Earlier, I have made offerings to the Marasa, the Loa, and the Buddhas. They are by the mirror in front of me. This is a magic mirror. This is a mirror out of my temple. This is a mirror that I use for expeditions. This is a mirror that I use for experiments. This is the mirror that I use to travel in. If you do this conjure again, you can make offerings to the spirits, deities, and entities of the system you feel closest to, be it Wiccan, Ifa, Norse, Santeria, Islam, whatever you feel closest to. I've made offerings earlier. Now we begin we begin with an offering to all the ancestors. Rub your hands together. We rub our hands together to produce heat. Feel the heat. We cup our hands to hold this heat. And we pass the cup hands through the crossroads. We make a crossroads in the air and pass the heat through it to the invisible world. Then we make this offering and use names that are meaningful to you. To those whose names are remembered, I give one. For me, that would be Charlotte Lewis, Joseph, Carl, to those whose names are forgotten, lost in the seas of time, I give my warmth. Hear any name, any word that comes up, Ale, Masu, Kita, Kane. To those whose lay, to those whose lay upon and within this land, I give heat, I give my warmth. Bele ma. With that, the offering to the ancestors is complete. I usually use a glass of water if I'm outside. Next, it's good to offer honor and respect to our teachers. <clears throat> we can think of our teachers. You know, think of your teachers. For me, this is the priestess Miriam and priest Ashwan Shamani of the New Orleans Voodoo Spiritual Temple, which is now Priestess Miriam's Healing Center. To Sorhor Nima of the Martian Current, my friend, my friend whom I spent so much good time with. Her teachings are supported by the Horace Mott Lodge. To Lama Lina, a great teacher of Dog Shen. Dog Shen, for me, opens a quite amazing gateway. Quite amazing. It, it in ways, changes everything. What it opens for me is Greatness of heart, resting in wisdom. Greatness of heart, resting in wisdom. And so oftentimes, when I go about my day, that is what I need 
to support me. Greatness of heart resting in wisdom. And to a larger sense, to all life forms I happen to meet in this incarnation, to all these I offer honor and respect. Okay, we begin. The words that I'll be using come from this book, which I'm honored to be part of writing, a major part of writing. So many other people. Bobin, who did the, the music, Magdalene, so many, so many people worked on it. Rick, like the uh, astrology that's in it. This is a reference work. It's got, it's all about Dr. John, the history and the folklore, everything we could find, everything we went through and could find. And it's an encyclopedia, so it's not to be read as a novel. It's something you can go into and use a table of contents and pick out what interests you. In New Orleans, Dr. John is well known that there are potions and posters all over the French Quarter commemorating him, commemorating him as life. This is the original Dr. John. I am honored to have worked with Starling Books in constructing an altar to him. This altar is in Starling Books. Uh, I believe now that they're not open at regular times. And I'm very happy that the altar resides there. A representative, a one could say an envoy or an ambassador of the original Dr. John, who is Dr. John Montanay, is Mac, the present Dr. John, who just who passed recently. Great musician, great musician, and great voodoo practitioner. I remember he was a marshal for a major parade during Mardi Gras. And as he left the float, he said, this is the first time I could hold the barons and the gay days in my head together. Great practitioner and a great person, too. There was a ritual, open ritual at the New Orleans Buddhist Spiritual Temple, maybe about 10 years ago. And Dr. John would come, and he came, and he was sitting there. I was drumming, and there was a number of other people drumming, too. And I looked over, and he had taken out his keys, and he was playing them. And I thought, oh, my God, what? There's greatness of art. There's greatness of art. Here we are drumming and he's playing this great musician playing his keys just playing his keys with us and uh as a little aside one of the, a woman came up to me afterwards and said oh i thought dr john came to these rituals i said you were sitting right next to him she was sitting right next to him so is dr john montanay well known here i'm assuming that some background is necessary i apologize to those who have a greater familiarity with him he was a spiritual consort of Marie Laveau, the first in a tradition of spiritual doctors. And this is from the book. This is from the book. Dr. John. Next, Dr. Yaya. Honor. Dr. Jack. Dr. Beauregard. Dr. Cat, Dr. Moses, Dr. Jim Alexander, Dr. Barkas, Dr. John, the present doctor, Dr. Char Charlie of the Voodoo Museum, John T, Dr. John T. Dr. John was the first, Dr. John was the first. 
New Orleans has a long history of male practitioners taking the title of doctor. Perhaps in the future, more female voodoos will adopt the title. It's a bit, a bit archaic to look at people as male and female. It's more than a bit archaic. There's, there's a continuum of sexuality, of course. We're all male and we're all female. Priestess is the title for women practitioners now. It is a designation of honor and respect maintained by the community in which the practitioner works. So it originates and is held in the community. Anyone can call themselves doctor. It is the community. It is the community that decides if this title sticks. John Montanay, or simply John, seems lacking in complete. Dr. John is music to the ears. He was a snake doctor, Indian doctor, spiritual doctor, conjure doctor, herb doctor, and root doctor. All well set titles in the community of practitioners. And, and interesting, Utu of the Dragon Ritual Drummers often uses the title Witch Doctor. It is a blending of Wicca and Voodoo. It is an apt candidate to join the ranks of the above titles. Doctor. Now, I use doctor, too. It, it was quite a while. I probably was with the Buddha Temple about 25 years until people started calling me doctor, and I started using doctor. I resisted it, and it's important. It is very important that this tradition not be lost that this tradition of spiritual doctors in New Orleans not be lost. And it makes sense, too. Okay. Doctor takes its origin from the Latin docere, meaning to teach. In archaic uses, usage, it referred to any person of great learning. Dr. John Montanay was of great learning in the use of conjures and herbs. Folklore has him as a teacher, as a teacher of Marie Laveau. Marie Laveau was queen then, and people say she learned a lot of tricks from old John Bayou. That's from a Mr. Barnes folklore myth pathway section in the book. Doctor, always written with a capital D, refers to the constellation Ophicus, the serpent bearer. That fits with New Orleans voodoo very well. There is a perfection here and an amazing symmetry with New Orleans voodoo. The human figure depicted in story outline is Esikbos, a healer associated with the use of herbs. Here we have the original snake doctor. The sacred serpent and New Orleans voodoo are so tightly intertwined that to have described Dr. John Montanay as a snake doctor would have been very accurate. The Codicus an emblem of the medical profession is most commonly enlivened by two snakes and as such paid tribute to Asiclius and Hermes or Mercury. The attribute of healing, Asiclius, is combined with commerce, elegance, negotiation, and demeanor of a trickster, the attribute of Hermes. Dr. John Montanay, with his real estate dealings, coffee house, and other enterprises, fits comfortably here. So doctor is an important term. Doctor is an important term. Dr. John, huh? the signature. About 2000, about the year 2000, right around 2000, we found the signature of Dr. John. This is a signature of Dr. John. This is very important in terms of conjures. This is a direct link to him, to working with him. And it's new. Carolyn Long found it. And around the year 2003, right around in there, she took me to the notorial archives in New Orleans, and we made a copy of it. I've got it in the book, and I use it 
consistently when I'm working with Dr. John. So this is new. This is new. It's a chance to add to our practice. And I'm very grateful to be a part of that. History and folklore and conjure go together. History and folklore feed conjure, feed the conjure. It's best not to disregard the mythology. Maybe you can't prove it. Maybe you can't find a document. Maybe it's someone's word. It is still very, very powerful in terms of building a stage upon which to conjure different loa. History and folklore have Dr. John filling many posts. He was a free man of color, reputed to be a contemporary of Marie Laveau in the voodoo on Congo Square. New Orleans conjure man, drummer, herbalist, physician, and spiritual doctor, as well as having a coffee house and dealing in real estate. He was a man worth knowing and is a spirit worth working with. History and folklore are equal, particularly in the practice of conjure. Seeing history, not history, the history, his story or her story. Seeing and hearing about a historical figure. Seeing the documents that related to his life as a person is a way of establishing a connection, honoring one aspect of the person. Here are some documents that we found. You won't be able to read them, but you can get a sense. You can get a sense. Here, this document here describes Dr. John as a physician. It's, it's from a, it's from a uh, census from about 1860. This document here, again, describes him as a physician. Now the person had the effrontery to put quack underneath it which is the uh, origin of a lot of different jokes about ducks. And again, this is from a, a census, about, about 1862, right around in there. This next one is really beautiful. This is a contract, different pages of the contract. Got the first page, beautiful handwriting, wonderful handwriting. Carolyn Long can go through and read every word. The contract. The signatures. This is where John Montanay's signature comes from when he signed this. This is his certificate of marriage. He was a free man of color. This is a certificate of marriage. This is his death certificate. This is the succession legal document, the succession for John Montanay. Civil District Court, Parish of Orleans, State of Louisiana. All this is available in the book. Dr. John has two burial places. There's the burial place of folklore, according to folklore. And there is where he is buried in terms of history. Folklore. That is St. Louis number one, folklorically. And the way I was introduced to this burial place for Dr. John was about maybe 1990, maybe earlier, 19, late 80s, 1980s. 
Michelin, my companion and I were walking around in St. Louis, number one. And from the book, a black man walking toward Michelin and I had remarkably blue eyes, very blue. The age that rode upon him also left its imprint on his semi-formal black clothing. He was dusty, very dusty, as if he had been sleeping in the cemetery. He, he had been sleeping in the cemetery. The three of us talked. He said the kids might come up with a gun that they were so poor and to just give them money if they wanted it. He said this with a wonderful um, greatness of heart in his voice. He kept asking Michelin if she was white or black. It was obvious that he walked a road much wider than the visible. I felt and can still feel the strength of his spirit. I can see him. I can see him as he was when we talked. I asked if I could give him any money for his time and he declined. He wasn't interested in money. What he wanted to do was show us the tomb of the original Dr. John. He showed it to us, took no money. He walked away, we walked away, and that is the folklore. St. Louis number one, tomb of Dr. John, the history. Historically, he rests in St. Rock. Historically, he rests in the arms of St. Roch, for whom the cemetery is named, who is himself a saint reputed to have cured a plague. Here the stories come together. The two tombs of Dr. John are a fine example of the historic St. Rock Cemetery and the folkloric St. Louis number one. Points of view, they're both points of view. Both are of use to the voodoos in their conjures. Both are equally useful in calling Dr. John. Both contain, both contain the real tomb of Dr. John. Now I went to the cemetery, St. Rock Cemetery, a number of times with a number of people looking for the place where his actual bones were interred and never found it, never found it. The cemetery flooded during Katrina, Hurricane Katrina, and so much was lost. Now, when I think of his resting place historically, it is everywhere in the cemetery. You enter the cemetery, you enter St. Rock, you enter the resting place of Dr. John. There has been a number of experiments, experiments, experiences from rites, from conjurers in different places, New Orleans, the temple, here, there, Babylon, Starwood, many, many of those, many, of many of those I've chronicled in the book. I think now we can go on to the actual conjure. That's some background. That is some background. And again, I am honored, very honored to have been a part of putting that book together. So many people, so many people are contained in there. The Pelican, the Pelican. Now we strengthen Dr. John that he may strengthen us in this time of plague. These are the steps to the right. This is an overview. First, Dr. John appears as an apparition. 
then the apparition is strengthened by being pulled through our body five times. We feed Dr. John. Earth, water, fire, air, in spirit from our body. We strengthen him. Therefore, the name the pelican feeds its young with its own blood. We strengthen him that he may strengthen us. Beginning the conjure. Beginning the conjure. First sight, Dr. John is seen before you in a dim light, a reflection in the glassy eye of a cat, ephemeral as a softly heard grace note in a great symphony. Indistinct as in murky waters, his figure slowly, his figure slowly revolves with legs and arms spread, limbs falling, drifting one into the other. Closer inspection reveals a lack of vitality in both external and internal coherence. His face, while animated, shows no emotion or understanding. This is a mere apparition. The apparition is before us, floating, lacking coherence. The arms and legs move, yet little purpose. First, to strengthen him, to strengthen this apparition, to give it solidity. We offer earth from our bodies. Honor and respect to Baron Samadhi, Baron Lacro, Baron Symmetry, Gate Nimbo, T.G. Millipede. Lend your grace to this holy work. Give to Dr. John Montanay the weight and solidity of earth. The apparition of Dr. John floats before you. Beckon to Dr. John with both hands. Pull Dr. John through your body. Pull him through the element of earth as it exists within you. He enters through our feet. And exits through our forehead. Here, in this working with earth, Dr. John gains a solidity of self in the virtues of earth, the purposeless spin of the apparition lessens. We pull him through us, earth. The apparition is strengthened with the aspect of earth we have offered. 
Next. It is water. It is water that we offer. Honor and respect the Olokun, the La Baleen, the La Sarin, to Argue of the waves. Olokun, whisper to La Baleen. Olokun, whisper to La Baleen. La Baleen, whisper to La Sarin. La Sarin, whisper to Argue of the water. Carry, carry the holy name of Dr. John Montanay from the ocean floor through the abysmal waters, up through the waters that know light to the waves, the great messengers of the sea. Agwe of the waves carry the name Dr. John Montanay both far and wide. Lend your graces to this holy work. Give to Dr. John Montanay the fluidity and virtues of water. The apparition of Dr. John floats before us within the ethers. Beckon to Dr. John and welcome with both hands. Pull Dr. John through your body. Pull him through the element of water as it exists within you. He enters through our stomach in midsection. He exits through our forehead. If the genitals are used as an entry point, a type of pregnancy and magical child may ensue. Here, Dr. John gave, gains a delicious, moist texture of life. Here is now the fluidity of self in the virtues of water.
water, moisture, life. A strengthening of the apparition. Next, fire. We rub our hands together to produce warmth. Feel the warmth. We beckon to Dr. John, now strong with the virtues of both earth and water, calling him with our warmth, with fire. Honor and respect to the great bearers of light, a goon of the forge, your Zuli with lips red as blood and hot as fire. Dambala la flambo, bring the light and strength of your sky fire. Gede la flambo, freely rain the fire of orgasm. Legba la flambo, bring words of blaze, dancing the spells falling like fiery ember. Simbi la flambo, intellect bright bestow. He enters through our heart and exits through our forehead. Welcome, Dr. John. Pull him through your body on waves of heat. Offer, offer the heat within your body for him to fuel a presence. The specter quickens. <clears throat> to fire, to fire, to Dr. John. Strengthen Dr. John. Next, air. Next, air. Share your breath with Dr. John. Blow gently, then forcibly. This is a most intimate offering in that your breath is moist with fluids which contain essences individual to you alone. Honor and respect to la grand zombie, the great serpent, the great serpent, bringer of magic and wisdom. Simbi, impart your connaissance to heal and to curse. Nanan Bukalu. Grow herbs that heal the body, the mind, and the spirit. Legba, speak the word that opens the gate to all words. Air, air, air. 
Welcome, Dr. John, with words carried on the wings of air, winds of light surround him as he passes through our body. We offer our ears pregnant with life. He enters through our nostrils and exits through our forehead. No longer, no longer a simple specter. Dr. John stirs. No longer, no longer a spectre. No longer a spectre, Dr. John Stearns. Spirit, spirit, the fifth element. Dr. John is now heavy with earth. Water, fire, and air. We have shared. We have shared with him. We have strengthened for him in the future to strengthen us. A critical possibility arises now at this point. The elements can mix. These elements can mix, creating a whole greater than the sum of these parts. Important, creating a whole greater than the sum of its parts. Cup your hands loosely to form a dark space. This is the room. This is the room. Hold your hands out before you to Dr. John. Open a space between your cupped hands for Dr. John to enter this womb world. Now, the waters are returned, not you. Beckon to Dr. John. The soft swirl and security of the luminescent darkness reaches out to call to gently soothe him. Here is peace.
Now move your cupped hands to the back of your head and place them just above your neck. Open your hands a bit. Open your hands a bit. Now Dr. John moves through our head. It is here that Dr. John receives the essence of spirit, not the aspects and attributes of any person. It is here that he receives pure spirit. The offering is timeless, universal essence. Now close your eyes. Open your hands and listen. See and feel in the darkness. Dr. John moved. We gave to him. Now he gives to us. As we strengthen him, now he strengthens us. As we gave to him, he now gives to us. As we strengthen him, he now he strengthens us. In this time. Not scarlet fever, COVID-19, in this time. In that, what we face on a daily basis, he comes to us. And he strengthens us. That we may be a benefit those around us. We are complete. 